What's happening guys, I'm TechSource. Welcome to Setup Boards, episode 186, Ultimate Edition, where we look at some of the craziest jaw-dropping setups ever featured on the show. If you guys think you have an awesome setup to impress my viewers or myself, then consider participating. Watch the video link below to learn how to enter. But with that said, sit back, buckle up, and let the Setup Boards begin. I want to give a huge thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. I'm sure at this point you guys have heard of Raid Shadow Legends. Every YouTuber and their mother have been talking about it. Seriously, it's everywhere. If you haven't been playing the game, then there's good news. Raid Shadow Legends is now available for PC and Mac. Raid on PC has the same great core gameplay as its Android and iOS versions, but with better graphics. There's a lot of really cool animations and control customizations for ease of play, and the difference is really noticeable. It is a cross-platform game, so when you install it on the PC or Mac, you can continue playing on your mobile devices. The installation is really easy, and it only takes a few minutes to get it set up and running. And the best part is, that the game runs smoothly on any potato PC. As of today, there are over 400 champions to collect and customize. I've been playing the game over six months now and was fortunate enough to collect a lot of good legendaries. My current favorites are Torment the Cold, who was unstoppable in my arena team because of his AoE freeze attacks, and Mountain King, who pretty much just one-shots everyone. The game is really popular with 50 million players worldwide, and the best part is that it's free to download and play. When you guys get the game, feel free to look me up and see if you can join my clan I am under Big Daddy 818. By clicking on a link in the description section to download the game, you're not only helping support the channel, but you also get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program. Kicking off the episode is Andrew from Ohio. A lot of you guys probably remember him from episode 179. He was the 22 year old software engineer that's also an admin on my Discord server. And this is the new setup that he built at his new apartment. Let me just pull up the notes real quick. Jesus, mother of Mary Joseph. This dude wrote a novel for his notes. Like I can finish reading the entire Harry Potter series faster than reading these notes. All right, let me read through this real quick and I'll get back to you guys. One eternity later. <laughs> what year is it? So good news is I finished reading the notes. Uh, the bad news is some time has passed and I missed a couple of weddings. But all seriousness though, <laughs> Andrew wrote down every little detail about his setup and justifications about his decisions. He essentially did this to avoid getting as much criticism as possible. But your notes will not stop me. All right, there's a lot to talk about, so let's get right into this. So the main purpose of the setup is productivity, mainly coding and occasional gaming if he has any spare time. He mounted three 27 inch monitors against the wall with a 32 inch TV up top as an overhead. The actual desk he's using is slightly modded. He's using a 98 inch Hamarp Butcher Block countertop from Ikea that he stained in gray to match the rest of the grayscale color scheme for his setup. Supporting the desk are two Alex drawers which have also been modded. He took out the top drawer from both of them so that they are slightly smaller to accommodate for his tiny size at just 5'8". Also, he didn't go for the usual capital legs to put in between his desk and the drawers because the chrome accents don't really work well with his setup's colors. So instead, he found some furniture feet and used that, which I think not only is unique, but looks a lot better. He kept the surface of the desk very organized and minimal. In the center is the K70 keyboard with a dark core mouse, and we also have an RGB mouse pad with beautiful cable management. Holes are drilled, wires are clipped, and power strips are attached with the help of a bunch of Velcro straps and raceways. The cable management for your setup is nothing short of spectacular, I will give you that. Okay, let's talk about the PCs. The main one powering the setup is called Photon, and it's a custom water-cooled build with a 9900K that's overclocked to 5.1 gigahertz. We also got 64 gigs of RAM and the EVGA RTX 2080 Ti. I think the clear distilled water was a great choice in this build with all the RGB lighting, but I would have personally loved to see some bends in there. One thing I do like about the build is the way you combed the cables together. That's actually pretty clever. And of course, extra points for that cable management. That right there is pretty impressive considering you have three SSDs and two Commander Pros with a buttload of fans packed inside there. Fun little fact, most of Andrew's time on Photon is actually spent outside of his apartment. He uses TeamViewer to remote into Photon and he utilizes all three of his monitors right from his work. 
The other PC is called Gigasaur and it's his system NAS that's located in his closet. It's basically Frankenstein if he was reincarnated as a PC. He managed to cram two PCs in there by drilling holes onto the side panel and installing standoffs for the motherboard and also squeezing in an extra power supply up top. He uses both systems together for storage, some gaming, databases, and some development things for running local web servers. One of my personal favorites is that he connected his Raspberry Pi to his Wi-Fi network and ran a server script that he wrote to open and close his garage door with his voice. That's pretty damn awesome. Hey Google, open the garage door. Okay, opening the garage door. In terms of audio, Andrew isn't much of an audiophile, nor does he like using speakers. He did, however, have an old boombox laying around, so he decided to incorporate it into the setup by mounting it on a wall shelf. He did mod the boombox to work with a Bluetooth receiver, but he doesn't use it anymore, and it kind of just serves as decoration up there. The only audio source he uses now are his Corsair Void Elites. I think what I like most about the setup is the wall decor. I think it makes the setup stand out more. He basically added a bunch of painter's tape in random areas of the wall and then he painted over everything in gray and then he peeled the tape off after, resulting in this abstract art which looks pretty cool. That combined with those hexagon acoustic panels gives this setup a refreshing, unique look that I haven't seen anywhere. I'm not really against color neutral setups like this one because once the lights do come on it no longer becomes boring or lifeless. Neutral colors tend to work better with RGB lighting anyways, and Andrew wanted something that also looks good with RGB off. I also love the fact that he integrated the Corsair IQ software with Google Voice to control the lighting. Hey Google, release control of the PC lights. Okay, releasing control of the PC lights. Hey Google, change the PC lights to America profile. Okay, changing the PC lights to America profile. Hey Google, change the PC lights to tech source profile. Okay, changing the PC lights to tech source profile. It's really awesome to see the progression of your setup from the beginning. You have made a lot of huge improvements over the past few years to get your setup to where it is today. With all that said, I do have some minor critique. Uh, most of this is nitpicking, but I gotta get it off my beard. Let's start off with the minor things. First off, the acoustic foams are not even, and that's obvious from the front view. The right panels are a little lower than the left. Also, I'm glad that you went with white strips on the wall instead of black, since white is more inviting and gives the setup a nice contrast without it being too distracting compared to black lines. However, a lot of the lines aren't clean if you look at it closely. Another thing that kind of bothered me was the center monitor. Now I get that it's a different model and that's why it's not aligned with the other two, but for someone who spent this much time and money perfecting such an amazing setup, I figured you would have had the patience to wait and swap it out before completing the setup because now if you were to upgrade later down the line, it's going to be that much more difficult since everything is already mounted and cable managed. And finally, which I think is the biggest issue I have with the setup is the boombox on top. It really feels like it doesn't belong here. It serves no purpose anymore since you said in the notes that you rarely even use it and the whole retro theme of that boombox just doesn't blend well with the rest of the setup. I feel like you wanted to put something up there just to cover that empty space above the TV. I mean, if you were into music or if your setup had more retro items, then it probably would have been fine, but it just seems forced to me. However, with all that said, I do appreciate the effort you put in this submission and the attention to detail for the setup. I can safely say that this submission stood out from the rest. I just love all the programming that you integrated in your setup. It's actually one of the reasons why it was so unique. And overall, it impressed me. It impressed me so much that I'm awarding you the 20th seal of approval. Congratulations, Andrew. I was actually this close on not giving you the seal of approval because of that boombox placement, but I feel like that's more of a personal preference, so I can't really take points away from you for that. But anyways, I know you're watching, so DM me your full name and address and I can ship you this beautiful plaque. Maybe you can put this instead of the uh, boombox. 
feel like this would be much better. Eddie is up next from Germany with another crazy setup. However, he has three of the same monitors. Take notes, Andrew. They are all mounted on the wall with a clever center speaker placement to hide the cables going down. I also like how he overlapped the monitors a little bit to cover up the extra bezels. The desk is made up of the IKEA Ekpak and countertop with a couple of Alex drawers as support. Both keyboard and mouse and even RGB mouse pad are from SteelSeries and he not only drilled a hole for the cable, but he also drilled another next to his mouse pad to install his wireless Qi charger. I'm actually stealing this idea for my next setup upgrade. For audio, he is using a set of Logitech Z960 speakers which he mounted on the wall and he also has a pair of Arctis Pro wireless headphones which he keeps on a wall shelf next to the setup. I love how Eddie made his own cable net underneath the desk. If I'm not mistaken, it looks like he used a curtain as a cable net. That's pretty clever. Although it doesn't seem like there was much of any cable management in there, judging by the massive bulge, but no cables are in sight and it kind of blends in with the wall since they are both the same color. I do like how the cables behind the monitors are managed, however. Very nice use of the white raceways and cable sleeves to cover up the wires. The PC power in the setup is sadly on the ground, but it's not really hidden. It's still visible in plain sight. We do have a Core i5-4670 in here with an ASUS Strix GTX 970. However, I would move that GPU to the top slot if you can for optimal performance. Overall, really digging the vibe of this setup. He didn't go crazy with the wall decor and he kept everything simple and minimalistic. However, with that said, there are some questionable choices. For starters, I feel like that plan placement is weird, mainly because of its size. It extends above your monitors and it kind of blocks off one of the speakers. Aesthetically speaking, it's not a great placement and it doesn't work well with the setup's theme. I would have personally put that on a small nightstand off to the left side of your desk or maybe even on the right side instead of that helmet. Also, if you really wanted to, you could have put another Alex drawer on the right side of the desk and put your PC on that instead of leaving it on the floor. Aside from those interesting choices, like I said, this is an awesome, clean setup. Thank you, Eddie, for entering. We are 3 for 3 so far. Jan is coming in at the third spot with yet another triple monitor setup. Now, he was originally featured in episode 166, but since then, he has listened to my recommendations and revamped his setup. The biggest change are the monitors. He actually took my advice and added two more 4K monitors. The PC specs are pretty much the same for the most part. It's still packing the 7700K and GTX 1080 in a beautiful water-cooled system that's built in a custom desk. Some really cool modifications done to the PC desk include a fan controller to adjust the fans in both his PC and NAS system. He also built a charging dock for his iPhone and he even embedded a USB hub on the bottom left, just to name a few. Another new addition to the setup are the speakers that he mounted on the wall. But aside from those, most of the changes on this setup are actually aesthetic. He no longer has that nasty green empty background and he actually surrounded the setup with a lot of stuff this time. He's displaying the boxes from his PC build in those glass shelves and he added some paintings up top. I think he did a really great job personalizing the setup this time around. Speaking of aesthetics, he did add an RGB strip underneath the desk and wrapped up the bottom baseboard with black carbon fiber. Well done, Janice. I'm really happy to see you took some of my suggestions and transformed your setup into something better. Thanks again for entering. You don't need three monitors to be a part of the Ultimate Edition. Ricardo's setup is a great example of that. He's a pilot who lives in Florida, and this is the setup he uses for video editing and gaming. More specifically, racing games. He's using a 34-inch ultrawide monitor on top of an IKEA add-on unit, and it's actually pretty interesting how he went about raising the desk. Instead of going with the usual capital legs that we always see on other setups, he ended up using a 43-inch IKEA lac shelf and he placed it in the center and then sandwiched it with two Linman tabletops. With the RGB lighting bouncing off the shelf, it kind of gives off the illusion that the desk is floating, which looks really cool. For peripherals, Ricardo is using the Red Dragon K552 gaming keyboard and the mouse combo. Right under the add-on unit, he has a few things that he uses constantly, like a wireless Qi charger for his phone, a USB hub with a built-in SD card reader, and a numpad when he's dealing with a lot of numbers. For audio, he's keeping it very simple with just the Void Pro headset, and he's also got a newer boom arm mic combo on the opposite side. Now, the PC power in the setup is actually mounted on the wall right beside it, and it's got the 6700K with a GTX 970. The cables for the PC are ran through the wall and under the wall shelves right below. Very nice. 
Right behind the setup is the lounging area with his console setup. We got a futon, a couple TVs, and his Xbox consoles underneath, and it's set up this way for co-op gameplay. He even added a projector back there for watching movies. This looks like the ultimate man cave. As I mentioned earlier, he uses his PC mostly for racing games, and when he's not using the racing chair, he stores it in his game room. I'm really loving the creativity and attention to detail of this setup. It's the little things that stand out to me, like using an RGB mouse pad as a base for his tablet. He also put it there to balance it with the RGB headset stand on the opposite side. This setup has the perfect amount of personality and I feel like he did a great job balancing the color scheme and the RGB lighting. He didn't go over the top with the nano leaf panels and he put accent lighting where it makes sense. The two RGB spheres on the add-on unit are also a nice touch and my man even went as far as drilling a hole for that small cable from the nano leaf panels. He really did go above and beyond to make sure everything is perfect and I see no reason why Ricardo doesn't deserve the seal of approval. Congratulations Ricardo on receiving the 21st seal of approval. I mean your setup is so unique and refreshing with so much attention to detail and I feel like it's got the perfect balance between lighting and personality. If you're watching this video please toss an email to setupwords at gmail.com to claim your one of a kind plaque. Not this one of course, this one's Andrew's. I'm gonna have to make a brand new one for you but congratulations and thank you for entering. Wrapping up the episode is Zane from Ohio. It looks like he was featured in episode 142 and since then has made some huge changes to his streaming setup. The biggest change is that all three monitors are now the same model. He's rocking three Asus 24 inch displays and the 34 inch ultra wide up top which is used with his streaming PC. It also looks like he ditched the Razer gear and went with the Ducky 1-2 Mini with the Cherry Browns and the Logitech G Pro wireless mouse. I wish you would have taken a picture of your setup with the lights on because it's really hard to see some of the stuff. Maybe you did it on purpose so I don't see any of the cable management. <laughs> For audio, he's still using the AT2035 microphone that's hooked up to the UX2 audio interface. The other biggest change to the setup is that now he has a second PC just for streaming. The gaming PC has a 6700K with a GTX 1080 Ti, while the streaming PC has a Ryzen 7 1700 and a GTX 960. That's pretty much all I can see from these photos. He definitely made some huge improvements since last time. I just wish some of the pictures weren't in the dark so I can see what your setup actually looks like. But either way, thanks for entering. And that is it for this episode of Setup Warriors. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to toss a like to show your support. But more importantly, let me know which of these setups was the best by leaving a comment below or clicking on the poll on the top right. Please guys, do not vote on the setup just because I gave them a seal of approval. This is just my unique reward that I wore them based on my preferences of a perfect setup. Uh, everyone's definition of a perfect setup obviously varies, so I want your guys' input and feedback, please. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I love your beautiful, beautiful beards or mustaches. And I will see you in the next video. Peace. Oh my god, this hurts. Oh, oh the things I do for subscribers. What's happening guys? Evan Textorus, welcome to Setup Wars episode 187. Oops, 186. What's happening guys? I'm Taxorus. Welcome to Setup Wars episode 186 Ultimate Edition. Where we look at some of the craziest jaw-dropping shut up shut up. Shut ups. Computer just went down. Are you freaking kidding me? What's happening guys? I'm Taxorus. Welcome to Setup Wars episode 186 Ultimate Edition. Where we look at some of the craziest jaw-dropping setups that have ever been featured on the show. If you guys think you have an awesome setup to impress my viewers or myself, then consider subscribing. What's happening guys? I'm Techsource. Welcome to Setup Wars episode 186 Ultimate Edition, where we look at some of the craziest jaw-dropping setups to ever be featured to ever to ever be. <laughs> and that is it for this episode of Setup Wars. As always, if you guys enjoyed the episode, let me know by leaving a simple. Uh. Oh man. <laughs> What year is it? Oh my goodness, I missed my granddaughter's wedding!